Welcome to the good life. Welcome aboard the Sioux ship, a clarity with Sue, where we are going to get tapped in and turned on for our life. We're reclaiming, redesigning. We've got new perspective, new thoughts, new ideas. And my promise to you is every week to bring new thoughts, new, new, new ideas and new perspectives. And it's the reclaiming, rediscovering, redesigning who we are. It's still you. It's just a little two point of the uh, international and national presence for helping us with our <coughs> KKNW um, listener poll. So thank you for doing that for us. We are done as of this week, I believe. Right, Benny? Uh, yeah, it was on Sunday. So we're going to compile yeah. all that information and hand it back to you in a nice Yay. bow in a box. Nice, pretty. I mean, that's packet. my expectations. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I I would like that too. Yeah, <laughs> so let's right? see what's going I mean, right. on. Yeah. You. Oh, I love it. Well, thank you, Benny. Good yeah. morning, sweetheart. Good morning. Nice to, nice to kind of see you. I'm looking at the KKNW banner, but hi. Okay, I'll turn it on. Thank you, everybody. They oh, love no. to see you and talk to us and the banter and all of that. <laughs> I'll make sure to do that next time. Okay, we will do that. So, you know what, guys? I want you, you know, I'm going to do the awareness. Uh, it's an inside job. It's awareness practice that I do every morning. And I'm just going to give you a little teaser today because within the awareness, it's how you are showing up, how you are showing up for your life and what that looks like for you. So, that contrast and, and really being aware, awareness is a number one with all of the reclaiming, rediscovering, you know, redesigning, uh, and you know, our evolution, right? It's, it's, you have to have that awareness versus denial versus perhaps being exhausted, feeling helpless, frozen. Those are the awareness, right? So you have the awareness and, and it is not normal for you to be frozen. It is not normal for you to be depressed. It is not normal for you to be anxious or exhausted. So with that, I'm going to get into our uh, little awareness practice for today. And it is about getting tapped in and tuned in to who we are. And in that process, it's about forgiveness. Today, it is forgiveness. So do you want to forgive or do you want to be in that dwelling that dwelling is that heavy sticky sad resentful you know you guys have heard me talk about that it's the sticky energy and it's the sticky emotions right or do you want to feel that light loving kind freedom you know eager kind of frequency and energy in your body really pay attention to that over the next couple of days and see where that's showing up in your life and make the appropriate changes now, learning to let go, there's an emotional and there's decisional. Um, there's two sides to this forgiveness. So when you come from an emotional or decisional, a decisional involves conscious choice, right? To replace ill will with will. So when you're in the process of forgiving, there's a couple little steps I want you guys to just um, foster, do. I'm inviting you to do. <laughs> so it's acknowledging that you're actually in that process of forgiving what that looks like. What are the feelings that are coming up for you within the, the umbrella of forgiveness? And why do I say, is it important for you to feel into that? Because it is, it's not about avoidance. It's not about shoving all those emotions down. Do not do that because you don't want to hold anger and resentments into your body. You want to forgive. Again, going to what I just talked about, you want to have the light, loving, free energies in your body. You just don't want to do that. So acknowledge it, lean into it. And of course, take baby steps, baby, little baby steps. Don't force it. It's going to be your own process. There's some bigger <laughs> ones. There's a bigger contrast and a smaller contrast of this forgiveness, forgiveness process. So again, lean into it, acknowledge it, but also start the process of forgiving and letting it go out of your, out of your body. It's the baby steps and then small acts of kindness. This was a huge one for me, you know, focusing on other people's not issues, but just focusing on other people, not to say that I was distracted or wasn't going to deal with it. Although I have done that and I don't recommend that either. We've all been there, right? What I would like to say is doing those small acts of kindness. It's a, it's a beautiful to lift yourself and to lift stingers. I'm adjective to describe when the forgiveness or the ill will comes up, the memory comes up. It's really important again, that you get it out of your body, replace it with love, replace it with a, a love visual, replace it with a love feeling. 
and just acknowledge, you know what? We're good. That doesn't serve me anymore. I'm moving on. All right. So with that, that was our daily awareness. It's an inside job. Sue here with Claire. Do we see we're getting tapped in and turned on for life? Today, like I talked to you guys about uh, having that awareness, we're going to talk about what is holding you back. There could be anxious, it can be exhausted, helpless, frozen. What about restless? What about trauma? There's a big, huge conversation about uh, trauma, small T traumas, big T traumas. There's a, quite a bit of the media is really uh, honing in on what these types of traumas are. Today, I have Marty Wetke, the Wetke Infinite Potential Institute in Santa Barbara, California. He's a pioneer in the field of neurotherapy, also neurofeedback. And was the first to utilize neurofeedback as an inpatient treatment method for drug addictions, anxiety disorders, depression, and post-traumatic stress. Welcome, Infinite Potentials. Marty, welcome. Are you there, Marty? Where did Marty go? Uh, Did we lose him? Well, he's there. There he is. He's just got a... uh, There he goes. (laughs) And, oh, just go and unmute yourself there, too, there. Sorry about that, Marty. A little production work here behind the scenes. A little production work. Thank yep. you, YouTubers, for watching yep. us yep. and for Radio Radio World. Yeah. We're getting it all. There all we go. Easy. There we go. Hey. Hey, Marty. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So, yes, I do the far, formal bio and all of that. I would like to know how you got started with all this. It's been 40 years, right? What's yeah. your why? Yeah. The why. The why is a long story, but I'll try to <laughs> consolidated a little bit um i was i was born and raised in new york and during my adolescence i went through a pretty rough period with uh drugs and alcohol and getting in a lot of trouble um and went in and out of drug and alcohol treatment centers for about four or five years uh started when i was 14 and uh really went through a rough rough period of time and this is back in the um, in the 70s so finally what happened after a, several overdoses and me sort of giving up and everybody giving up on me i had uh you know the proverbial spiritual awakening experience uh, and it was profound october 28 1978 so i wow i remember it and um that was it that turned um my life completely around and i and long and short is i realized that i survived what i survived uh for a purpose a reason like many people do who go through that sort of thing and i had a mission i had to help other people so that led me to um pre-med uh which i i wasn't real thrilled with i ended up moving from new york to georgia to attend chiropractic university outside of it and i thought that that was a nice holistic field uh um but part way through there i met a spiritual teacher who had a, a yoga retreat center in north georgia and he made a huge impact on me and i felt like that you know i was i was still searching for my path but i felt like you know what that's the path of spirituality that's I had a spiritual awakening. This is what I need to aim for because this is how I can learn to share what I've done. So I I moved up to a very rural mountainous region of North Georgia, this New York boy up in the middle of of hillbilly (laughs) country. Excuse me. (laughs) Totally. Um, No, you're good. I, uh, there happened to be a very plush hospital there, drug and alcohol treatment center. Uh, It's not in existence anymore. It was Woodridge Hospital. And I started teaching meditation there just Mm -hmm. as a, you know, as a service, my my ministry, so to speak. And one day the medical director approached me. He said, what are you doing with these people? This was, this was 1980, 82 in the mountains of Northern Georgia. (laughs) You know, he's and, and I'm, I'm going to imitate his accent and see what, what are you doing with these people? <laughs> yeah. The hillbillies are like meditation. <laughs> and he was no hillbilly. He drove up to the hospital on Bentley every morning. So, Oh my goodness. Gotcha. So, um, so I said, you know, I'm just teaching him meditation, but the patients were reporting to him every night when he did his rounds that this guy is 
doing something profound. My pain's gone. My anxiety's gone. My depression's gone. My drug and alcohol cravings or eating disorders, whatever it was. So he asked me, he said, would you design a program for us? And it was a 12-step program, which I wasn't into 12-step, but 12-step is a good program. It ends in a spiritual awakening and so on and so forth. And forgiveness really, <laughs> and acceptance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, the, the, I realized I needed to be, if I was going to work in the, you know, Western medicine, I needed to bring more validity and credibility to the process of meditation. So I researched and researched and researched and found, you know, the, the most significant thing that happens with meditators is their brains change over time. And it's being proven more and more now. But back then it was even, uh, there was some research showing that. So I looked further and I saw there was this thing known as brainwave biofeedback, where you can actually measure the brain and give feedback. And I found a company that sold the equipment. Lo and behold, the um, hospital said, go for it. And we, 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 they gave me my own building. I had seven treatment rooms. And there were 35 uh, patients at, at all times. The hospital stayed full. Wow. I saw them all twice a day. And, um, you know, back then, it was just myself and a handful, literally a handful, you know, like this many around the world doing this. So I was the first one to do an inpatient psych. And even though my, you know, my goal was, you know, I'm going to speed up the meditation process with these people we have them for 30 days. You know, that was my goal and still is my goal, frankly. But immediately the, the patients who were going through it started reporting, as I said, my chronic pain's gone, my cravings gone, my post-traumatic stress, which I've been dealing with for God knows how long is less. I'm sleeping better et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that became, you know, the, the, the focal, the selling point. And I got published early on and people around the world, uh, clinicians around the world, like, what is this? We've got to try this. So that's what really set it off. And it spread, you know, throughout the United States and in Europe, I went to Europe for a long time teaching and training people. So it it was it started out as a mission. It still is my mission. I'll never stop. You know, people are, when are you going to retire? I'm not going to retire. This is, I'm this is this is my life. You know, it's not mm. my work. So um, you know, and I've had some remarkable successes. My son was brain injured at birth uh, 30 years ago, and um, I had to figure out how to treat him because there was nothing out there. And now there is a center in uh, Roswell, Georgia, if anyone wants to look it up, named after him called Jacob's Ladder. And it's a profound place for autism, downs, brain injured kids. He works there as a teacher, We've got 200 full-time employees, all one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, the program is, is something that I and my ex-wife designed to fix his brain and it's going uh, full force right now. So so, you know, lots of inspirational moments in my life and, and people and successes that have pushed me forward. But um, it's a it's very and out here where I am now in Santa Barbara, California. You know, it's a very good consciousness here, um, this whole West Coast, in fact. And uh, we get a we get a, um, you know, a lot of acceptance here. The medical community uh, work with the prison system, sheriff's department. Um, so it's a, it's a, it is, it is caught fire. And, it, and as you said, you've done it. So, you know, it's, it's getting fairly well known. I'm surprised it's, you say fairly well, well known, but gosh, you've been doing this a heck of a lot longer than I have. I'm like, I, you know, it should be mainstream, right? It yes. should be, it, sh it really should be part of the process. It should be. I, and honestly, <clears throat> I'm amazed it's made it as far as it has now. Why, why is that? To unpack that. What do you mean? Well, um, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do this, Marty. You know what? Cause I want, yes, for the why. And, um, of course we, we teach what we most need to learn. However, let's back up before we do that. Sure. And when I saw the analogy and the example of the choir on your website of how this is, how about we start there and give them that example so they understand and have a foundation of what we're talking about. Okay, I'll I'll modify it a bit. Okay. Um, so the, the the brain has this electrical activity, 
uh, constantly. It's so much that we could light a 40 watt light bulb with the amount of electricity our brain is producing. And the trillions and trillions of neurons and networks are all reflecting what we're thinking, how we're thinking, how healthy our brain is, how unhealthy it is. It's like a choir. If it's working right, the harmony is beautiful. Uh, the soprano knows when they have a solo, the tenors know how to back up the bass and so on. But the brain is very much the same way. And so we can measure a person's brain waves. We can't you know, tell them what their thoughts are, but we can tell how well their brain is working. We have enormous databases now that give us norms. So the brain is always communicating with internally and externally with the environment and then processing and, and, and uh, translating it internally. So the, these brain waves are what we measure, this electrical activity that we measure at the scalp. And they're telling the story um, like how healthy the mind the mind is, how well the brain is working, how much trauma and how much it's, whether it's firing or not firing or wonky, yeah, yeah. my language, right? And co coherence, how coherent. Coherence, yeah. There's there's six thousand measures, and there are lots of different categories. Connectivity is another big one we're discovering now. So every thought that we think is being carried by these brain waves. These brain waves are like uh, carrier waves; they carry intelligence. So um, what what we saw happen with meditators is very clear. The the efficiency of the brain uh, increases, processing increases, and then conversely, when we see problems like depression, anxiety, post traumatic stress disorder, you see problems in these brain waves and in specific areas of the brain. We can tell when you know it's like grooves. You know, if you drive past the cow pasture you can tell where the cows walk all the time because there's grooves well it's the same thing with our thoughts and our behaviors unfortunately most of them are subconscious and we don't even know why we're driven to behave and think and do the things we do as you said in the beginning if we become aware event and and use the right interventions we can eventually overcome them but it's really it's way easier to stay in denial, though, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> well, the brain, there's literally parts of the brain that want to. They don't want us to see certain things. Yeah. Like, no, that's too much. We have yeah. a part of the brain called the default mode network. And it keeps us sound asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a job. It's its job to, you know, to preserve energy. Yeah. So, like, if you're driving down the highway and all of a sudden you say, oh, this is exit 76. Well. The last exit I remember is exit 25. What happened? Well, your default mode took over. It actually drives better than you do. <laughs> but the problem wait, wait a minute to the drivers listening. We don't recommend that. Please yes, don't stay, do aware. That. stay aware. Don't, don't space do out while you're driving. No. So, um, but it, it, it does that for everything. Oh, I like that kind of person. I don't like that kind of person. I have this judgment, resentment. You know, everything is is contained within that default mode. And what you see with advanced meditators, Tibetan lamas, is the default mode quiets. So they can be, you know, it's very cliche, but it's true. They can be present. They can be here now and not constantly acting out of memory or projection into the future. Right there is so important, Marty, because people think that that's their norm. Because they've been positioned in it sure. for so many. I mean, they yeah. were born into it. They were in the womb in it, you know? Exactly. And it's not and your norm. No, it's not. And the default mode keeps driving us back to that. It's really. Or there's <laughs> coffee or there's, you know, the other energy drinks. I'm not going to televise yes. stuff that's going to keep us zinged up and zinged out. Yes. Right. Yes. No. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, that's what. Most drug addiction I have discovered in my experience is self medication. We're just yeah, trying yeah. to, our different numbing out, you know, different brain chemistries have different propensities, whether it's food, sugar, you know, stimulants, sedatives, alcohol, whatever. There are, there are neurotransmitters, which are the brain chemicals that drive us towards certain things. And that becomes part of the default mode network. Oh, I know well, what will solve this problem here. Let me take a pill or let me take a drink or let me take a snort, whatever it is. Whatever it is. 
So it's really, that is our biggest challenge. The default mode also defines our false personality, yes. you know, our authentic sense, our real identity is hidden by the default mode. No, you're not that. You're a body. You have a mind. Maybe you have a soul or a spirit somewhere, but that's not guaranteed. You know, and it's all quite the opposite. We're spiritual beings with a body and a mind, but we're not that. We are right. the we are the being, the awareness behind that. But the default mode wants to tell us otherwise. No, it's all about survival and who gets ahead first and so on. So when you say the default mode, what I hear, my language, what I use, it's like the nervous system going tap, tap, tap. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. We're going to keep you safe. Is it kind of the same thing? I mean, obviously yes, very, we've got the... Very, very, and you, you see it. It's all, it's these networks in the brain and you can see it on a scan. It lights up and it's like, it's like a pinball machine. Ting, 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 ting. Yeah. Go, like, all the neural just, pathways firing and, up. And it just said, this is the way it is. Don't argue with me. I'm trying to save you energy. <laughs> this is how it is. You don't like broccoli. Okay. Forget it. <laughs> Even if it's good for you. It shows me right here. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And then our traumas, you know. Um, oh, Lord, yes. The amygdala is a part of the brain that is always scanning if we've been traumatized. It's always scanning for similar people, places, and things in our environment. That's why people who have been traumatized are so hypervigilant. Why am I always aware of everything? Or why do I startle so easily? Well, because your amygdala is really on guard. Yep. And unfortunately, it's tied into the limbic system, the emotional part of the brain, and then the viscera. So the whole every cell in the body starts real. Oh yeah. Uh, Bessel van der Kolk wrote a wonderful book called "The Body Keeps the Score." Yes. Quite so literally, good. is true. Your our bodies keep the score of yes. everything that happens to us. Well, the default mode. Guess what? It keeps the score too, and it's just trying to protect us. The problem is, it keeps us in these vicious cycles of behaviors and thinking if if we have anything negative going on right the the rabbit hole the shames the guilt all exactly. the well you heard me at the top of the hour talking about um the awareness practice of forgiveness right and i'd like to use because words are important words are very powerful right so i i like i say sticky sticky energy sticky words that's the resentments it's the sticky stuff you know very this accurate. right or it's the crimp in the wire and the nerve you know the wire in the brain it's sticky I don't know where I was going with that, Marty, but it sounded yeah, but that, good. <laughs> that's accurate because that, that's what the default mode is. It's it is it sticks to things. Yeah. Um, and it keeps us stuck. And it keeps us stuck. Yeah, just like what you were talking about. You know, on this well on on your one sheet, but also on the website. It's what are those things that are keeping us stuck, holding us back? Right. Exactly. It's the anxieties, those things that we think that are our norms, our anxieties, our um, exhaustion. I know, and I speak from my own personal experience in all of this because I was hypervigilant. I, mm -hmm. I'm still, I have residuals of that and still working through that. Mm -hmm. And also adrenal failure and everything that my body was like, oh my, you're constantly on fight and flight, right? Yeah, yeah. Constantly. Yeah. And you don't realize how exhausted you are until you are exhausted. You're just flat yeah. out done. Yeah. Flat out. Flat yeah, out. So. Well, you know, it's an epidemic now because of yes. the, the pandemic. Yep. There's this lurking background threat. And people who never had anxiety, or at least didn't experience to the degree that they are now, are feeling this threat and not understanding where, it's, or, you know, you kind of get where it's coming from. But what it's doing to the body and the mind and the psyche is, is pretty significant. So we get a lot of that. And it's a lot of clients who, who have this um, pandemic produced anxiety. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's the rabbit hole again, too, Marty, where, you know, it's that massive isolation. We as humans yeah. were packed, oh, right? I mean, you, yeah. you've got this conversation between introverts and extroverts and all that. However, long and short, the reality is we are packs, yes. you know, and I, and I know for myself, there was a massive isolation and I, and with the isolation, now I'm having to go back because I work from home. I live from home, all of that. And I'm like, Ooh, I can get all cozy and safe in here again. <laughs> you know, I'm good. I'm safe here. And I'm like, Sue out. 
yeah. out, you know, you have yeah. to stop that and get out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Well, okay, so, okay, well, it's about 8.30. Let's take a quick commercial break. Hey, guys, on the radio world, we're going to take a quick commercial break with Marty. We're going to come back. We're going to keep talking about neurofeedback, neurotherapy, what this looks like. We're going to unpack it some more. Um have a little bit of conversation about that and some stories. If you'd like to join us on YouTube, we are still going to be live on YouTube for the commercial break. So just go to YouTube and type mm -hmm. in 1150 AM and you can see us both noodling on YouTube. We'll be right back. You guys. Okay. All clear. Thank you, Benny. Mm -hmm. Okay. Marty. Meditation. So when you first went in to the hills and you were teaching meditation, you were just teaching the core essence of meditation. And, and was it meditation and breath work? Was it meditation? Can you just talk to me about that? Because I've, I've done walking meditations. I've done four and a half hour pineal meditations. I've done, you know, Silva meditations. So I'm just really curious of, of well, what. Well, I studied with a couple of masters. One was a... Swami Rama from the Himalayas, and wow. I, he had an institute in Holmesdale, Pennsylvania. He was a controversial character, but this is the guy they studied at Menninger's who could stop his heartbeat and do all kinds of strange and supernatural things. So I studied with him. Then my teacher was Roy Eugene Davis, who was a uh, direct disciple slash student slash monk of uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, who wrote the Autobiography of the Yogi. So it was it was Kriya Yoga. So that before I started teaching, I spent two years sort of in a semi-monastic environment. Medita I mean, I was meditating six to eight hours a day and really going through all the techniques, you know, mostly in what Swami Rama taught, it's mostly about the breath. And there's mantras and other things. I did walking meditation, but I quickly learned how to go within, how to use certain breathing techniques and experience higher states of consciousness. You know, I don't go out there and teach that to just everybody. Uh, you know, there's a hierarchy of practices that I will teach people. But most of it is based on yoga philosophy, some Buddhist uh, work, uh, even Qigong. Um, I've been to China and studied with some uh, monks in different monasteries. But uh, so, you know, it's, it's eclectic. I round it out and I try to individualize it uh, for the person. I mean, I don't want to challenge anybody's belief systems. Um, right. But, uh, you know, it, it, and not everybody is interested in learning it. I mean, and, you know, people will try it and then drop it and try and drop it. But, uh, but I mostly, I'm, it, for me, it still mostly centers around breath. Breath and mind are intimately connected. And when you learn how to regulate the breath correctly, you learn how to quiet and calm the mind down. Oh, it's so true. Oh, that's right. I can breathe. Oh, yeah. oh, there's a whole lung. There's lungs all the way down. I can, all of that. Yeah. Yeah. You realize yeah. That you hold your breath. Oh yeah. I, and I, and I find myself, um, that habituation, right. Yeah. And I have to stay in that heightened awareness Yeah. and go breathing too. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're safe. You're safe. <laughs> That's it. That should be the mantra. You are safe. I'm safe. And you have permission. <laughs> you have permission to, yeah. and you heard me, it's reclaiming, redesigning, rediscovering your own self, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's going back to Marty, what you were talking about um, earlier. It's again that permission, but also the awareness and recognizing that you don't have to be an anxious. You don't have to be. And I got to bring you back flight. in here soon. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Stand by. Welcome back. It's Sue. Welcome back, you guys. Clarity with Sue getting tapped in and turned on to life. We are getting into this new perspective, new thoughts, new ideas. Marty, what key we are joined. We have been talking about neurofeedback, neuro. Well, we didn't talk about neuroscience, but it's kind of all packaged in that whole thing. Um, neurotherapy, what you are doing, um, your why, the default mode, that nervous system going tap, tap, tap. Although beautiful bodies are beautiful nervous, I say bodies as the umbrella. Thank God we have this whole beautiful body, God, G-O-D, whatever, chopsticks, whatever you want it to be for you. 
-hmm. that you have this beautiful, incredible vessel that can protect you, can love you. And Marty and I, during the commercial break, we were talking on YouTube about having permission and reminding ourselves that we are safe, right? And and I was asking Marty during the break about his meditation practice, because you guys know I've I was I've spent many years um traveling around the world and and helping people with within healing themselves. And meditation has been the number one foundation for well, of course, awareness, but then meditation, whether it's walking meditation. Um, and for me, and Marty, you were alluding to this on YouTube. Some people don't take to meditation, but I, I would like to open that up and unpack because when I have the conversation about meditation, it could be walking in the garden. It could be shooting hoops with a basketball. Yeah. It could be anything that gets you in that state. Yes. It is so important that people understand that. It's not, and, and I, because I'm so practical and that's, it's not about going to the mountaintop and going, no, 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 no. It's not you know, for five, six hours. It's not, it doesn't have to be that. If you want to do that, go for it. Yeah. However, in our day-to-day -day life, we have bills, we have cars, we have in-laws, we have animals, we have shiitakes going all around us, right? So we need real-time, real-life practical tools to help us self-regulate yes. and get us to homeostasis and to love on our body. And the number one thing is the breath. And it's free, brothers and sisters. You guys have heard me talk about this. There's no coupon needed. There's nothing. All you got to do is breathe. Right, Marty? Yeah. It, you know, <laughs> as, as we said on the break, the mind and the breathing pattern, and by pattern, you know, inhalation, exhalation, where in your torso you're breathing from, ideally the abdomen. Uh, so the breath and the mind is intimately connected and all most meditation teachings uh, teach that, that if you can if, learn to regulate the breath, not force it, not control it, but regulate it. And remember to breathe. And, <laughs> and watch Have that awareness, watch, right? Yeah, watch the breath. Uh, eventually, the mind will, will quiet down because that's the whole point behind meditation, not stopping the mind, not stopping thoughts, but taking a step back from the mind, a step back from the thoughts, and experiencing the awareness that is behind it. So, but you're absolutely right. Um, when when we work with uh, criminal people who have criminal history, especially if they're pretty new, um, you really can't teach them right off the bat how to meditate. They'll have they'll have ab reactions. I mean, you've been in yoga classes where somebody jumps up off the floor and runs out screaming, "I can't do." Well, what happens is when you start to settle the waves down, whatever's underneath there will jump up. So with with these guys, we guess what? Out in the garden, that's your meditation. Silently plant that plant and nurture it. And, uh, you know, some people call that karma yoga. But after a time of working in nature, uh, sort of a selfless um, uh, attitude, then meditation can come. But yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe you've got it. Yeah, maybe not initially. It may take a little time. And that's okay, you guys. Okay. It's absolutely. those little tiny, tiny baby steps. It is the baby steps that are going to have that foundation to get you where you want to go. And and again, and I think Marty would agree to this. Don't don't allow yourself to go down the rabbit hole of I'm the shames or the guilt. I'm not doing it right. I'm not doing it this way or that way or She's breathing better than me. It's not about any of that. It's your personal practice. Yeah. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. yeah. And breath is the number one, you guys. And I remember talking to some kids and I would, I would have them. And I don't, maybe you've heard this before. I would literally show, you know, trying to get them to really do that deep breathing, mm -hmm. put them on their bellies. Mm -hmm. And then I say, take a deep breath and they kind of waddle on their belt and they would, it was fun for them. Right. Because they're, they're like, Whoa, I'm like, see, that's you feeling, filling up the whole lung capacity. Right. Yes. But it's so important, but that's, that's me too. That's, I want to have fun and have that silliness because yes, we are dealing with some serious issues. However, let's put a little bit of sugar on it and not go down the shame hole. Right. Yeah, very effective. Not sugar coating it. Just a little bit of powder sugar. <laughs> Give it a good flavor. <laughs> yeah, totally. Okay, let's. Uh, we talked about 
neurotherapy, the choir example. Marty, can we talk about neuroplasticity? Because I don't, and and to break that down, because I don't, I I have found that people do not. Well, one, they haven't had the education. Two, the media just doesn't talk about it openly. That you can change. Yeah. You absolutely can change your 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 brain chemistry, your your neurotransmitters, your neural paths all of that, that then has this domino effect in your biology and all the cells and everything. So it's a really juicy conversation. Go ahead, Marty. Yeah, there's, there's two principles that have been, I say recently, the past few decades uh, acknowledged. It's not that they've been discovered because they've always been there. The first is neuroplasticity. And that just means neurologically, our systems are plastic. They can um, adapt, mold, and they... The, the reality is they do constantly. This is, right now, this is happening. Your listeners are listening to what I'm saying, and they're having changes occur in the brain and so on. The other one is neurogenesis, which is very exciting. Stem cells uh, can create new neurons, new connections. Um, and that's another process that goes on till the till our last breath and actually a little bit beyond. So um, these two principles, uh, are quite miraculous because it means that we're never frozen. We can always change. Malleable, changeable. Malleable. But uh, we oftentimes we have to be intentional about it. Like, like you said, the awareness practice is a, is a good example. Um, because whatever, whatever uh, consistent thoughts or attitudes we have are taking that neuroplasticity and as i mentioned with the cow pasture trail trail they're, they're digging those grooves in deeper and deeper and deeper um but there's ways to get out of those grooves uh some of it is just being intentional meditation is another way sometimes it takes a shock they're like oh my gosh you know i'm destroying my life i'm destroying their lives and sometimes that's enough and because see New connections don't take a long time, that long. In fact, really quick. Than I, can I know snap. I went on the website because yeah. I'm tactile <laughs> and I can see it. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. So every time I go into that space where I'm like doubting, I'm like, mm -mm. I have that tactile memory of the neural pathway going, nope, awesome. you changed. And I'm like, oh, sorry. And, go ahead, Marty. It's super cool. <laughs> it's like the, the neurons will go, boop. You know, they'll make new connections instantly because that's the way they want to go. And that, as, as you said earlier, is going to affect every cell in the body. Um, you know, so so many of our illnesses and diseases now are being traced back to stress and traumas and, and so on and so on. And you can undo a lot of that if the process hasn't gotten too far down the road. Despite, you know, and there's that Norman Cousins wrote, you know, books about how he cured himself and so on. So um, th this is something that you obviously uh, caught on to and, and, and share with your listeners. But being intentional about how we think um, will change that those neural pathways in a positive direction. And the important thing here, Marty, with that conversation, thank you for that, is the conversation you're having with yourself, the language that you're using. You know, I was talking at the top of the hour about that contrast, the sticky stuff, forgiveness. Yeah. You know, it's the sticky, you know, you can feel it. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's the dense energy. It's the dense yeah. emotions, whether it and it's the light and the forgiveness and the love and the eagerness. Right. You know it even Absolutely. in the conversation, you know it, you yes, can feel yes. it. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's very good. Yeah. So important. The biggest message, Marty, here is one, you have a big fat permission slip, mm -hmm. meaning finding the people, the tribes, the new perspectives, the new thoughts and the new ideas, whether it's my radio show, it's Marty and, and, and going to you guys and finding what feels right to you. And, and Marty and I have been talking about the breath work and meditation and neural feedback. And this is just another incredible tool to help you really see your 
personal feedback, my language, right? Because you can actually see that neurologically what's happening. What, you know, like your example with broccoli. Nope. Your body doesn't like broccoli. I can see it right here. Right. Or the example that you used with the choir too, which I think, and if you guys want to go to the website, I'll get everything for you. But that choir example, because it's that coherence, right? Versus yes. the chaos. Yes, exactly. exactly. Uh, I've been working for years to bring in coherence with mm -hmm. um, internal life and external life. Mm -hmm. And it's it's getting there, right? You know, there's still mm -hmm. bits and pieces that pop up. And I'm like, yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> it's those little sticky Velcro ball. I'm like, nope, no, thank you. I don't want any more of that, right? Oh, yes, yes. Yes. And the breath work is so important. But we've got a couple more minutes. Um, tips and tools. I mean, we talked about breath work because I want people to walk away um, with some light bulbs, right? I mean, I'm sure there's been quite a few with, the, with our conversation. Uh, but also really being able to get the help that they need. I mean, this platform with the radio show and what we're doing is helping itself, but where can we go with this, Marty? Where, how can we have that conversation with the audience? Well, um, you know, joining a, a group of like-minded people who do meditation can be extremely beneficial, really helps to meditate in a group of people with other people who have experience. There's no doubt that that collective energy the vibration of that collective energy uh has this osmotic effect well I, we have a, a very big office here three thousand square feet but one thousand square feet are devoted to a meditation room where we have meditation service. sign me up <laughs> anybody <laughs> comes to the general public because oh. uh, that because people report they say you know i can't have trouble at home but when i come sit with a group i can meditate so that's that's number one i really I want to stress that. And then, like you said, it doesn't have to be, you know, this formal sitting in a group and chanting home and doing mantras. Go out to the beach, go to the woods or, or a park or wherever there is nature. Take your shoes and socks off. Oh, just... with that, Marty, can I say something? Because this is something I learned a few years ago, and this was so juicy and profound for me. So I, I teach it as well. That whole going into nature and grounding, Absolutely. instead of walking forward, I encourage, including myself, take your shoes and socks off and walk backwards. Yeah. Because it's so intentional. You have to get in your body. You got to know where you're stepping, right? Yes, that's very good. It's so juicy. Okay, please continue. And Qigong, that's good for your kidneys too, by the way. Oh, is it? Nice. Okay, kidneys. Yeah, so, I'm doing so the moonwalk. You know, the, <laughs> you've heard the, the forest bathing, you know, go take a forest bath. It's just so it's so good because we are from nature. We're not from mm. the concrete and the metal. No, no. And as much as we can, we have to avoid the electrical pollution, the noise, the cell towers and so on. The chaos. The chaos. So the other thing, though, there are breathing techniques that are very, very effective. There's some more advanced ones. But there's one called alternate nostril breathing, which is very effective for balancing the brain hemispheres. You can Google it, and there's all kinds of examples on YouTube. Alternate nostril breathing. Yep, done that, um, yes. The other thing is uh, keeping the body clean, as clean as possible. Eating is, you know, it's not always easy, but eating as clean as possible. Food that is as close to its natural state as possible. In other words, as soon as it's processed, packaged, dehydrated, it's, it's, it loses its vitality. Food has vitality, not just vitamins and minerals, but vitality. So we encourage people, if they want to feel better mentally, physically, emotionally, uh, you know, take a look at what they're eating and how they're eating. Uh, and then there's, you know, then along with working on the mind, you've got to work on the body, um, whether it be some kind of a stretching class, hatha yoga, a Pilates, whatever, or, you know, good, a good massage just to get the stress out of the body. It's extremely important. You cannot hope to, uh, you know, integrate trauma in the mind and the motion and psychologically without working with the body. It can't, it won't work. I've seen it over and over again. You've got to address it from both perspectives. So, you know, I, I would encourage uh, your listeners um, if they have or suffering, look, look for, uh, interventions like that that have to do with the body, with the mind, with the breath, meditation if they can. Uh, 
get their diets right, exercise. Sunshine, oh my God, people are so Sunshine, paranoid. Yes. You, you know, you don't go out there and burn yourself, but we are creatures that um, this, the cycle of the sun is what produces the cycles in our body. And for instance, I get a lot of people with insomnia. The first thing I tell them to do is get about 30 minutes of the morning sunlight. You know, get out there, soak it up, expose a square foot of skin. And sure enough, that sets off the serotonin cycle, which what does it do? It ends up as the melatonin cycle and helps them sleep at night. So there, there, you know, this the all the all this holistic knowledge is still sort of in the background, is but but it's becoming more and more well known now that um if we approach the body, the mind, our issues from this holistic perspective, and I love the way you say give ourselves permission. Um, and f- forgiveness is number one, particularly forgiving ourselves. Uh, it's it's amazing what the body can do, really. Mm. It is. And I, I'm breathing and breathing into exactly what you just said, because there's so much truth in, of course, the awareness, but then that forgiveness of self. That forgiveness of self is a huge process. I say process of elimination (laughs) because you want to eliminate and get all that stuff out of your body, out of your nervous system, get rid of it. And, and to, to come from a space of forgiveness, not in uh, shame, not, you know, forgiveness is, is, is all about you. It's about, Mm your body, your psyche. And again, Marty, going back to you have permission, you don't have to live that way. You don't have to speak that way. You don't have to show up that way. Mm -hmm. That's an old program. We were talking, you, you call like the default mode or the nervous system or a trauma, you know, there's this old story in there that says, this is how you have to show up. This is how you have to behave, how you, or not. Yes. Yes. And so, and then that can be tied in with trauma. You know, there's so, <clears throat> so all in all, what what I'm saying too, and what Marty is also teaching through neuro neurofeedback and breath work and meditation, it's self love, it's self care, it's emptying the, it's emptying. You know what? I just had a visual of Marty. It's mm-hmm. a boat. You know, you're in a boat and you're trying to scoop out the water before I drown, right? You mm-hmm. know, getting mm-hmm. get it's the analogy of that. Mm-hmm. I can't keep mm-hmm. rowing the boat. Mm-hmm. upstream and it's, and I'm drowning. I, ju- I can't do it all at once. Right. So yes. provide, get tools like neurofeedback, breath work, forgiveness. These, these are a, a lot of this here that we're talking about guys is stuff that you can do going out in nature, walking backwards. It's great for the kidneys. <laughs> I love that. Do the moonwalk naked or not. Well, you could do it naked too, but I was thinking <laughs> do the moonwalk on in Santa Barbara at the beach or something like that. I don't know if the Santa Barbara police would like you doing that naked. Some but of the beaches, some of the, some beaches. Of the beaches. It's totally They're reserved <laughs> for reserved for that. But yeah, all in all, it's about, that self-love that self-care for you and yourself and again like marty and i've been talking about it's it's you have the permission and to remember to breathe and there are extra tips and tools for you that's provided for you like the neurofeedback and being able to go is there other places other than santa barbara i mean how can we get a hold of you if they're like oh my god i totally have to do this how can how can they do that um, well, yeah, yeah, uh, w- our website for one, and you know, if people find a practitioner near them or a clinician, uh, you can always email me because you know this field is fairly new and not, excuse me, but not all neurofeedback is created. Oh yeah, do your due diligence on anything, yeah, some, but please, yeah. You know, some people go out and take a weekend workshop and say they know how to do neurofeedback, and that's not good. Mm-mm. So, so you have to be sure you're going to uh, somebody who's been who has experience been doing it, not necessarily huge credentials, but at least have experience. But you know, now when you go to Google neurofeedback near me, you usually you find somebody. So that's one way. Then, of course, you know, um, there are, there are uh, Hatha yoga student. I say Hatha. Hatha refers to the 
the poses, the stretching and so on, and the breathing techniques, uh, they're everywhere. You know, even uh, libraries and universities have that now. Um, so, you know, I would encourage people to look around and see what's available to them. Usually you find it everywhere. And if you want, look at our website. And if you have a question, uh, you can email me or my staff, or my wife, through the website, and we can guide you. And let me give you the website really quick. It's triple W, and this is how you spell the name. It's not, I, you taught me how to pronounce it, what key, but that's not how you spell it. So, audience, no. here you go. It's triple W, W U T T K E Institute. Dot com for now, those let of me you back up yeah it's what key and then we we took out institute now it's ipi oh that's because that's where yeah. i went to today ipi okay yeah. okay but what i bet you IPI if they just did. typed in w t t k e yeah. they would find you i know yeah, i did that all, yeah referred. yeah there absolutely one more, when you look at the website you'll see that we do sound therapy too i forgot to mention oh that. yes that's i saw another, that extremely powerful tool because it works with the mind and the body uh, my wife does that actually uses tuning forks and that's um that's becoming uh, quite well known now as another way to balance everything so you know it's 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 what fits for you and i yeah. use the analogy marty of hats you you know some people like the hats straight on some like tall bra you know brims or some are <laughs> off to the side some are caps some are there's all different shapes and sizes because there's all different shapes and sizes of humans, right? Yeah, yeah. So what we are saying, what I know I'm saying, and, the, and my promise to all of you and my listeners with this radio show is providing you new perspective, new thoughts, new ideas, so you can try on the hat for yourself. Sure. The biggest message is you have a big fat permission slip audience. You absolutely can change whether it's neuroplasticity <laughs> and getting over your trauma, you can, it is absolutely scientifically proven. You can, it's just little nicks in your wires. Let's get them straightened out. And I know for myself and Marty, we talked about the neural pathways and how they change so rapidly. Me being so tactile, I literally went online and I saw that and I'm like, it was like, poof, mm -hmm. huge for me. Because now if, if, well, I don't so much anymore, but if I do, I start going down that rabbit hole, I immediately, I do a switch, you know, it's flipping the script and I go into that neural pathway. I'm like, uh-uh, I'm going to love and trust right here. Love and trust. You can see it cool. to remind myself. Right. And I, and I put the visual of the, the neural pathway changing. So that's really important. Yeah. So there's all kinds of tips and tools. Marty, thank you so much. And thank, thank you. you for spending this, this um, hour with us today, educating, um, mm -hmm. promoting and loving on you. Thank you to your staff and your wife for giving us this hour with you. And when I'm in Santa Barbara, I would absolutely love to come and meditate Please. with you guys. That would be such a gift. Please do give us, give us a call or an email. I will. I will. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Thank you. And let me know how I can keep supporting you. Cause I mean, I love this work. I absolutely love this. So keep, keep it, keep me up to date. All right, you guys, uh, next week, actually next week, we're going to do some breath work. So I'm super excited to bring our next guest on. Uh, he specializes in breath work and we're going to have, he's actually a soul brother of mine. And we've had some pretty incredible deep conversations about this. So until next week, I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. Stay tapped in and tuned in to life, turned on to life. And until next week, each of you are a gift. Get out there and share yourself with the world.